Welcome back. We're on our second day of video devotions on the Shawnee Alliance Church blog. It's great to be with you again, and uh, you should know that, no, I did not wear the same shirt two days in a row. I'm just making all of these recordings on the same day. So, yes, I do bathe every day. I do change my clothes every day. Uh, my wife wouldn't let me into the house if I didn't do otherwise. But anyway, today we're moving forward from Acts chapter 21 into Acts chapter 24. And what's happened here is that trial that we talked about yesterday where Paul was just worshiping in the, in the temple and then was arrested because people didn't care for him and wanted to get out of there. Paul was initially taken before the Jewish Sanhedrin, which is like the Jewish Supreme Court that uh, met in the temple and discussed Jewish matters. Well, that wasn't a satisfactory thing, so Paul appealed to... Oh, there's Pastor Chris outside my window distracting me as he does every day. Here, ready? Look, here he is. So, anyway, back to our important Bible study here. Um, Paul appealed to, uh, he was actually there was a threat against his life, and so some of the Roman soldiers decided to protect him and take him to Felix, one of the local Roman governors. And when he did that, um, he was, of course, again, required to give testimony for the charges brought against him. And as he did so, let's notice what Paul says in Acts chapter 24. When the governor motioned for him to speak, Paul replied, I know that for a number of years you've been a judge over this nation, so I gladly make my defense. You can easily verify that no more than twelve days ago I went up from Jerusalem to worship. My accusers did not find me arguing with anyone at the temple or stirring up a crowd in the synagogues or anywhere else in the city, and they cannot prove to you the charges they are now making against me. However, I admit that I worship the God of our fathers as a follower of the way, which they call a sect. I believe everything that agrees with the law and that is written in the prophets, and I have the same hope in God as these men, that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. So I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God and man. Now I realize that in this trial, and in the scenario that Paul finds him, what he does is he's finding himself uh, face to face and facing off with people who do not believe the divinity of Jesus Christ people who do not believe the messiahship of Jesus, God's Son. And he does. And that's a dividing point, as he states that, uh, I admit that I worship the God of our fathers as a follower of the way. And so he says, this is where I am a little bit different from these people who are bringing the accusation. But then he goes on to say all the things that he holds in common. Because I believe everything that agrees with the law that's written in the prophets, I have the same hope in God, and I have the same belief of a resurrection. And so it's interesting to me that Paul only defines one difference that he has between his accusers. Here's the thing that I think applies to us. There are two things. First of all, most of our arguments and conflicts can probably be overcome if we focus on the common bonds that we have with others. This is especially true when we face conflicts of beliefs, conflicts of habits, or personal style with other Christ followers, whether they're members of our own church or attenders of our own church, or whether they participate and worship at a different congregation. Most of our conflicts can probably be erased if we would focus on what we hold in common. In fact, that's what Ephesians chapter 3 says we are supposed to do. We should make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit to the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. See, those are our essentials. And in our essentials, we've got to agree. The essentials are that Jesus is God's Son, that there's one God, there's one baptism, there's one faith. But then there are also non-essentials where we can give liberty to others. And even when there are differences, and in any scenario, we're called to love. So our, my first application for us today is focus on places of mutual agreement, especially when those conflicts and arguments and divisions exist among members of your own church family. However, there is a second point that's important for us to realize, and that is that Jesus is often a dividing point. That people do divide over the identity and the role, the purpose of Jesus Christ, and whether or not they follow Him with their heart and their life or not. And so, we also have to be aware that sometimes it's okay to divide, but we do so in an act of honesty and in a way of love. So, those are the points I want to bring out for us today. That even as Paul was in trial, he first of all focused on what he had com in common with his accusers, but he did not back down from what he believed about Jesus Christ. That's something we can uh, uh, appreciate and 
apply in our lives as well. So as you go forward today, may you be bold about your love and following of Jesus Christ, but also be compassionate, be loving in discovering the things that you hold in common with others, even though they might be a little bit different from you. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.